Good morning and welcome. Good morning. I am glad you're here. Thank you for uh, starting your week. I know that we have several guests all the way from uh, Arizona. Welcome. And Terre, Terre Haute, right? Michigan. Michigan. Thanks for being here. Welcome. My wife is making signals too. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Are there announcements that you want your church family to be aware of? Once again this year, we're working with the Salvation Army and other Bloomington churches to collect school supplies for needy families in the in Bloomington area. Uh, there are two collection boxes, one in the narthex and one downstairs just outside of Fellowship Hall. There are lists of needed items. Feel free to take one and when you're out shopping just pick up a few extra things. Every little bit helps. Uh, if you're at the grocery stores all carry school supplies now so you don't have to make a special trip anywhere. Uh, if you're unable to get out they do accept monetary donations and we'll be collecting uh, all through the month of February. So uh, you have three more weeks. Let's see if we can't fill the boxes again this year. February. Did I say February? Yeah. Let's <laughs> try July. <laughs> I'm not thinking. Okay, uh, so let's see if we can't fill those boxes this year. Thank you. Other announcements? Alan, nothing? Good to go. You know, next Sunday, the 13th, is our kitchen lunch of love for June. Sign up sheets in the narthex. And then on the 20th, uh, June is going to be presenting a special musical program for us. Um, and then it's bye bye. Aww. Clean next will be distributed for <laughs> If you have not been aware, uh, Jiyun has accepted a position at San Diego State and will be traveling all the way to California uh, for her new position. So uh, we will miss her, we love her, and our prayers uh, over the next few weeks will be for guidance as she prepares for some new chapters in her life. So. Uh, Having said that, let's prepare our hearts as June helps us do that.
in this place that we are reminded that Jesus died and rose again so that we might have life. It's in this place that we're reminded we're not alone. It's in this place that we can bring our struggles and our sins and be healed. It's in this place of togetherness where God meets us. In this moment of silence, would you open your heart and your mind to God's healing power? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have come together here in the name of Jesus Christ to worship God who loves us and sing with the Spirit who fills us. It is good that we are here. Would you open your heart to this worship? Please join me in the call to worship. We are people who have been called to follow where God leads us. By faith we can obey, even when asked to walk into an unknown future. We are people who have been challenged to tell God's story to others. By faith we have the ability to share the good news. We are God's children who are invited to feast at this table of grace. By faith we will embrace our sisters and brothers in Christ. Please join in the opening hymn, number 335, Do I Speak? <laughs> find our rest in God. First in silence and then in unison would you offer your own confession to God. 
May we pray. And now with our voices, may we pray as one. Wise, Wise and loving God, God you know, know how we are. We have spent so much time getting ready for the summer months, planning when and how we shall relax and gain some peace in our lives. We have rushed around and now we are exhausted. Our need for rest is so important, but we have like plans and schedules crowded in. Shouting, shouting their demands on our time, time and energies. Forgive us, Lord, when we have focused so much time on these things, things and not sought your healing, restoring love. Give us peace now and forever. Broken, we are made whole. Thirsty, we are filled with living water. Longing for a new relationship with God, we are welcomed with open arms by the one who forgives us. Without, Without a doubt, God's, God's love never comes to an end. Thanks, Thanks be to God, God. we are, are forgiven. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. you. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Hi. Good morning, how are you? Good. Yes, there are eight in there. You have a nice stand. Thanks. No fishing, you know. Good, yeah. Peace. Peace of you. Miriam, <laughs> she's so <laughs> floating. I'm baking now. I know that one. <laughs> Hey guys. Hey guys. Did you know it was summer? Did anybody go on vacation? You were on vacation last week, weren't you? Where'd you go? Tennessee. Nashville. Whoa, that's fun. Did you see any stars? Oh, that kitty. I was going to ask, uh, how many like to get presents? You do? What kind of presents do you like? I knew you were going to say Legos. Because you love Legos. Do you like presents? What do you like to get? Dolls? Like little kitties? Oh, baby dolls. Do you like dolls? What do you like? Do you like Legos too? What? Skylanders. Oh, Skylanders. Oh, yeah. I remember Skylanders. It's been a while since I've seen Skylanders. Is that kind of like... Never mind. <laughs> I like to get uh, um, pins. That's kind of strange, but I, I'm <laughs> kind of a pin guy. So, uh, let's... Yeah, I'm a pin collector. So, if you ever get me a present, get me a pin. Anyway, 
a pen is like something you write with. I also like to get, does anybody like to get candy? No. Yes. Does anybody like to get uh, uh, cards that people sign? Mm, yes, sometimes. Sometimes. My son and daughter used to open the card and they would look, they would kind of hold it up and if money would fall out, they would really like it a lot. Because, <laughs> you know, it was worth, never mind. Well, this morning I want to talk to you about really good gifts. About really cool gifts. Does anybody like to give bread for a gift? If somebody gave you a thing of bread, would you like it? Uh, maybe, not. maybe not. Well, you know, if you think about it, in a few minutes we're going to be doing this and get this bread and then we're going to get this little cup of juice. Do you know what that is? Communion. Yeah, communion. Do you know what it means? Well, this bread is like a gift. It's like if I gave you a picture of you or a picture of somebody else, it'd kind of be like a symbol. It's not really that person, but it's a symbol of who they were. So this is a symbol of God's love for us and his life. He, this is kind of like... Yeah, it's kind of like his body, but it's not really his body. Yeah. And this is like juice. This is that other is like juice, which is like his blood. It's like Jesus lived, and when he lived there, he gave the most remarkable gift he could ever give is his life to us. And he lives still. And so he wanted us to have his body and his life living just for us. So the most special gift you'll ever get is God in our hearts. So let's have a prayer, okay? Dear God, help us to understand the remarkable gift you gave and continue to give as we celebrate Jesus' life. Not only the life that you live, but the life you still live inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing number four as the deer.
And now let's receive our tithes and offerings. Today's first scripture is from Job, in the Old Testament, chapter 7, verses 1 through 18. In the Pew Bible, it is page 381, and in the large print Bible, it is page 778. Do not human beings have a hard service on earth? and not their days like the days of a laborer, like a slave who longs for the shadow, and like laborers who look for their wages. So I am allotted months of emptiness, and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My flesh is clothed with worms and dirt. My skin hardens, then breaks out again. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never see, 
against see good. The eye that beholds me will see me no more. While your eyes are upon me, I shall be gone. As the cloud fades and vanishes, so those who go down to Sheol do not come up again. They return no more to their houses, nor do their places know them anymore. Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the sea or the dragon that you set a guard over me? When I say, my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions so that I would choose strangling and death rather than this body. I loathe my life. I would not live forever. Let me alone, for my days are a breath. What are human beings that you make so much of them and that you set your mind on them, visit them every morning, test them every moment? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sarah. Before we... Uh, I said it was such a fun reading. Yeah. <laughs> Uplifting. Makes you shudder. Yeah. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> We're going to offer our prayers of celebration and struggle at this time and then actually take those prayers to this table a little later. But in this moment, would you remember to us those things for which you would like us to pray? Stephanie? Um, a joy and a concern. We had a good week this week in Tennessee helping people who were affected by last year's flooding down there. And they continue to struggle a bit, but they're doing better. And I got an email this week from my best friend. Her husband unexpectedly lost his job. So we need to pray for Lou and Jen. Okay, Lou and Jen, and Lou lost his job, and uh, the flooding in Tennessee. Yeah. Okay. Andy. Uh, my cousin's girlfriend had a minor stroke and lost part of her vision, and seems to be coming back, but, you know, prayers for her healing. Okay. Andy's cousin's girlfriend, Brenda, had a stroke and lost part of her vision. So we pray for her ongoing healing. Uh, Bob? Uh, Brenda, uh, daughter's uh, son was uh, injured in the uh, incident the uh, Wednesday hospital now with remaining injuries. George. Say the name again. George. George. George uh, was injured. In an accident, and okay, okay. A good friend of ours is going to London this ash tonight. A good friend is going to London. Yeah, really. Kind of back in a small airplane. Okay. <laughs> so he'll be here next Sunday. Yes. <laughs> He's saying that I'll be out of the office this week. So. <laughs> Thanks for your prayer. Lance. Um, Alexander is <clears throat> going on a two week backpacking trip to New Mexico. So, travel mercies to him and all the uh, Boy Scout Troop 100, the boys and the adult leaders, to have a safe and fun time. Is it, it's New Mexico, right? Yes. Okay. Philmont Scout Branch. Okay. Boy Scout trip to New Mexico. Please pray for all the Scout leaders. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Bob? Also, one thing, our daughter, Jay, and Fred, the priest, are on church mission in Louisiana. Okay. Jane and Fred on a church mission in Louisiana. 
care, travel nurses for my family in New York. Travel for the high kings. Do you hear uh, good news they made from it safe. They made it all safely, so they're having a good time. Good. Yes. Prayers for our country's leaders to bring us back to the Christian nation. Okay. Prayers for all of our country's leaders and all who lead us. Alan. Uh, to um, Mr. Burkhart and um, my pray for my cousin's daughter Carrie Ann. Uh, you know her husband um, died last week. <coughs> And in a motorcycle accident, and both of her arms are broken. And she has other injuries. And I pray for her for encouragement. And she's still got three kids that she's taking care of. Okay. May we pray? Actually, we're going to pray at the uh, table, as I said earlier. So. Uh, <laughs> Habit, habits die hard, don't they? Our scripture from the New Testament is a great deal more joyous <laughs> and is found in the 11th chapter of Matthew, verses 28 through 30. Perhaps he was speaking to Job when Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Bob Benson was a well-known speaker who gave a talk at his son's high school. He wanted to do a good job, obviously. So he went out and bought a new suit, a three-piece suit, when they were in style. He spoke <laughs> feeling that he had done a really outstanding job, but as sometimes happened, the student one of the students came up following and said, Mr. Benson, did you know that your vest is buttoned wrong? <laughs> he looked down and sure enough, he had buttoned the second button and the first hole. And there's absolutely no way of overlooking that kind of mistake. He was feeling so self-assured but his cockeyed vest was staring at the kids, and that probably was all that they noticed from that particular speech. He said, you know, it's not hard to button your vest wrong. You get the first button wrong, and they're all wrong. It's not hard to button it correctly either. You get the first button in the right position, and everything else falls into place. Perhaps it's that true regarding our lives. Most of us can come to the end of our day feeling exhausted and overwhelmed and overworked. Is there any way to get back the balance that books describe that is talked about in Scripture? <coughs> So long ago, perhaps we knew the meaning of the word balance. How would we recognize balance if it happened within our lives? Mr. Webster said in his dictionary that balance is a form of harmony in which the various components form a harmonious whole. Nothing is out of proportion. CNN did a poll in which 69% of participants said, I want more balance in my life, and the others weren't telling the truth. <laughs> With our people around us telling us what to do, 
demands coming from all directions, it's hard to find balance. Where is the time for all that life demands of us? There was a cartoon with Jesus being approached by three of his disciples saying, sorry to interrupt the quiet time, but we're due at the temple at 8.30. We're booked with a man that was born blind, ten lepers, and a demoniac this morning. This afternoon we have a lunch at Levi's. How did Jesus maintain the balance that was so difficult, not only for Jesus and his world, but for ours as well? Jesus maintained his balance, did what was most important, and lived life by his correct priorities. He didn't conduct his life floating in the wind. Do you ever feel that your life is out of sorts? Of course you do. And you can't just say that folks in Bible times knew nothing about stress and imbalance. Their crisis barometer hit overload just as much as ours. God wants us to know balance. His desire for us is that we know the peace and harmony that comes from the blessing of balance. From Matthew 11, the most joyous of the two scriptures that were read, it said, Are you tired, worn out? Burned out on religion, come to me and you'll recover your life. How does that sound if you could recover your life? Come all who are exhausted and I will refresh you. Is there hope that we can manage the pace of life? Is there a seminar that we could listen to on a DVD on our way to some meeting? I'm afraid that when our vision of success is merely to complete everything on our to-do list, then we set ourselves up for failure. We just can't keep shuffling the order on all of our competing priorities. And the hope that somehow, some way, someday, we'll get those all done. In the end, that only amounts to rearranging the decks on the top, the deck chairs on the Titanic. Who to whom was Jesus talking when he said to come all who were exhausted and he would provide rest? Well, to the Jewish population to whom he spoke, life was nothing but a list of endless rules and burdens person lived their life in a forest of regulations dictated dictating every action that they performed in every sense of the word they were wearing a yoke i've known people whose religion was very difficult for them to carry so committed to being heavenly that they were in turn no earthly good they were miserable and were often so judgmental that everyone around them became miserable too. This doesn't reflect a balanced life. It merely reiterates life's battles. And the trade of our overwhelmed, frustrated selves, Jesus offers help. He says... <coughs> Bring your weariness and replace it with my yoke. Sounds like someone wants to sell us some swampland or a nice lemon to drive. Well, if you know anything about yokes, perhaps you know that they went around the neck of the ox. And I don't know about you, but when I'm exhausted or overwhelmed, the last thing we need is something else to go around our neck. What a strange paradox. 
that a person already weary and overloaded must take on new weight. Well, a yoke was made of wood, cut to measurements, measured by the ox in the very beginning. The yoke was roughed out, and the ox brought back for a second fitting. It was then readjusted so that it fit perfectly. Its purpose was to help the ox carry the weight without doing damage to itself. Jesus' words to us are reassuring. My yoke is well fitting. His desire is not to load more upon us. But what we need is a change in our thinking. Managing the pace of life will involve learning that it is okay and sometimes essential to say a magic word. And that magic word is no. Jesus was a master at knowing when to say no. He said no to temptation, even to his closest friends with goofy ideas that would sometimes come his way. He said no to his family. And he said no to other people's agendas. Saying yes all the time reflects a need to be loved, to be liked, to please everyone. Realize that there is nothing we can do to earn God's love. And there's nothing we can do to make God love us less. If our time and our commitments were based upon our convictions rather than upon others' agenda, then we would stop living in the pressure of the moment. Who needs me now should not be our call to our, prior, our day's priority as we run from crisis to crisis with little thought of what and who God says is important. One of the reasons that we raise our hand in frustration is that we often allow others' agendas to control us It'd be easy to be out every night of the week. But do you know whose fault it is when this meeting and that demand fills our calendar? It's not the fault of those who, whose demands fill our calendar, but it's our fault for saying yes. We have a choice. And our choice is to continue to be overwhelmed or come to believe what is important in life to withdraw more in order to be refreshed. Henry Nouwen wrote a book called The Way of the Heart. And he said, the key to finding our center, our balance, is consistently practicing the spiritual disciplines of solitude, silence, and prayer. Jesus said no to nonstop accessibility not because he didn't care about the people around him, but because he still needed to say yes to that quiet place within himself, that quiet place of his faith. In the midst of an overwhelmed life, guess which goes first? Time to be quiet. If your life is on a treadmill of overload, you can still run all that we want. We can try to run faster. We can try to run longer. But we're not going to find balance and satisfaction. It's more than a time management technique. It can only be found in a life that is centered upon God. The Apostle Paul said, For in Him we live and move and have our being. <coughs> Sarah read some pretty distressing words. I loathe my life among others. <coughs> Job was talking about a life of balance, a lack of balance. But when we live and move as if God is our center, we'll know peace even when things are out of control. May we pray. <coughs> O oh God, give us, grant us your peace and the balance that comes from knowing the peace.
peace that passes all understanding. Help us to find that deep within ourselves because we know Christ as Lord of our lives and as guide. In the courage of a risen Lord, we pray. Amen. Our hymn is 513. We'll sing the first and the second verse of Let Us Break Bread Together. Would you stand? table that does not belong to me, to us. It belongs to Jesus Christ. And you are welcome as a baptized member and a believer in that Jesus Christ, not as a member of a particular church, but as a member of the family of faith. And so we invite you as the elements are received, the bread and the cup, to also take and receive as well. This is the Lord's table. We are not here because we deserve it, but because it's God's gift to us. May we pray? To you, O oh God, we bring our thoughts, our celebrations, our hopes, and our desires. We come being reminded of all the ways that you have rescued us, that you have lifted us above our loathing, that you have reminded us to put yourself, Jesus Christ, as our center priority and to focus our lives on finding and knowing the peace that you provide. We thank you, God, for the gifts of each of us the gifts that remind us that into each of us have been poured your tremendous love and the ability to use that love to all who need a lift a word of hope a gift of expression that they matter and that they count. We thank you, O oh God, for this place of hope and healing. We thank you for the prayers that we lift to you now, those who travel in coming days, those who are abroad or leaving soon, Boy Scout camps, visits with family. We lift to you, O God, all those who struggle physically, knowing that you are our great physician. We lift to you, George, 
for his injuries. We lift to you Carrie Ann. We lift to you Dr. Dick Burkhart. We lift to you Brenda with the stroke that she has recently undergone and experienced. And we pray for your healing power in the lives of each of those and the others that we did not mention verbally, but you know each one. We lift to you those who are the victims of crisis and disaster, flooding, hurricanes, tornadoes, and those who struggle for peace in lands that know very little peace. We pray for families who are at risk of injury and those who don't have enough. We thank you, O oh God, for your abundance. And we thank you for having answered our prayers and for knowing our needs before we ever offer those needs to you in this way. To you, O oh God, we lift that prayer that you taught us as we pray out loud or sing as one. Together may we offer our expression of faith by that ancient baptismal creed and confession, the Apostles' Creed, as we say as one. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. It was on that night that Jesus was betrayed and arrested that in that upper room he took bread and after he had given thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. 
do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup and said, This cup symbolizes the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink, remember me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. body of Christ given just for us.
blood of Christ shed just for you. God of compassion, through Jesus Christ, you reconciled us to yourself. May we follow your example of prayer and love and service and give those things away in excess this week and beyond. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Our closing prayer will be the last verse of the song that we began earlier. Let us break bread together, number 513, only the last verse. overwhelming promise of the ancient benediction. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you from this moment and beyond, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.